Welcome back to Based MMA. These are my UFC 307 predictions. We got Alex Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree Jr. as the main event of UFC 307. And I'm going to start off with the main card. We have Roman Delizzi versus Kevin Holland. Very, very weird fight. Uh, I'm not sure why this fight is happening. Actually, I do. I think Chris Curtis was supposed to fight Kevin Holland and somehow pulled out of that fight. Uh, I'm not sure why, and Roman Delizzi is now stepping in to fight Kevin Holland in the middleweight division. And this fight is a very random fight, um, if I'm being honest with you. I think both of these guys aren't all that elite. I mean, both good fighters, both you know average kind of fighters in their own divisions. Roman Delizzi just is coming off a win over Anthony Smith, where you know Anthony Smith stepped in on short notice. He stepped in on short notice as well. But I mean, Anthony Smith is basically garbage at this point in his career. You know, he's a very good. At one point, Anthony Smith was a pretty good fighter. Now I just feel like uh, he's such a he's such an inconsistent fighter. And yeah, Roman Delizzi was able to outstrike Anthony Smith, but like I said, that isn't really saying much. And then before that, Roman Delizzi got shown levels by Nasadini Mavov earlier this year, which, I mean, maybe it's not that bad of a loss because Mavov is actually doing pretty well at this point. I mean, he's coming off a win over Brandon Allen, so maybe losing to Nasadini Mavov isn't, like, the worst thing. But, I mean, he's lost to guys like Marvin Vittori, so interesting. You know, I don't think Roman Delitz is all that good. He's not that good of a striker. You know, he has decent striking, you know, throws overhands, very plotty, very predictable on the feet, you know, good grappler but i mean not good enough to get submissions on the ground or to have significant control time against actually elite fighters in the middleweight division and then for kevin holland on the other hand i know he's coming off a win over uh is it michelle or michael whatever that guy name is he's coming off a submission win which was pretty controversial and he kind of got dropped in the first round and then prior to that kevin holland got shown levels this year by michael venom page on the fee so I think both of these guys are a little bit, I don't, they're a little bit washed in my opinion, but I'm going to go with Kevin Holland to win this fight. And the reason for that is because I think Kevin Holland is the better striker. He's a faster guy on the feet. He's a long guy. I like Kevin Holland fighting in the middleweight division. I really, really like that. I like Kevin Holland better at middleweight than I do in the welterweight division. I think this is his weight class. And I, like I said, even though I think Kevin Holland is past his prime, I mean, lost to Michael Venom Page. Lost to JDM, lost to Wonder Boy. I think he's good enough to beat someone like Roman Delizzi. I really do believe he's good enough to beat someone like Roman Delizzi. But I, I could see it being a close fight. Roman Delizzi could shoot takedowns. Kevin Holland doesn't have the best takedown defense. But like I said, on the ground, I just think Kevin Holland is actually a lot better when it comes to his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I think he has enough of a threat on, on the feet to just keep Roman Delizzi away and at some point hurt him in this fight. So I'm going to go with Kevin Holland to win by a TKO, maybe even a decision. But I have to go with Kevin Holland to win this fight. Now moving on to the next fight, we got Kellen Vieira versus Kayla Harrison. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't remember the last time Kellen Vieira fight. I don't I don't remember watching one of her fights. I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I'm not going to fake it and tell you that I know Kellen Vieira style because I really don't. I don't even remember the last time she's fought. Like she she must have not fought in quite a while because I really don't remember the last time this girl fought. Let me check. <laughs> the last time she fought was July 22nd, 2023. So it's been a minute, all right guys? It's been a minute. Um, a lot of split decisions, decision unanimously. So I guess she's decent enough. Um, but I mean, like I said, I don't really know too much about her. Um, I'm pretty sure I've watched her fight in the past. Cause like I said, I watched basically every card, but that doesn't mean that I always remember. And it's not a fighter that I really, you know, that people really care about. No offense, but Kayla Harrison, you know, monster. Had one fight in the UFC at UFC 300 against Holly Holm and basically just destroyed Holly Holm. Even on the feet, she had success. So I'm going to go with Kayla Harrison to win this fight. She's a pretty big favorite. She should win this fight. I mean, she has a judo. You know, she actually looked pretty decent on the feet. You know, has good power. Very physically strong. And I think at some point, I mean, Kayla Harrison is probably going to be the champion of the bantamweight division. I think her biggest hurdle is going to be that weight cut. And I think at this point, she's pretty locked in. So I'm going to go with Kayla Harrison to win this fight. By what? I don't really know. Like I said, I don't really know Kellen Vieira's weaknesses. But I think Kayla Harrison is probably going to get it finished by ground and pound. Or, yeah, I'm going to go with Kayla Harrison to win by ground and pound or maybe a decision. I'm going to go ground and pound 
win for Kayla Harrison. Now, moving on to the next fight, we have Jose Aldo versus Mario Batista. Man, I don't like this fight. The matchmaking in the UFC has been so weird, man. I don't like this fight. I think Jose Aldo just beat Jonathan Martinez earlier this year. And instead of, like, you know, rewarding him with, like, a big name, right? Beating a contender like Jonathan Martinez, who had a lot of hype at the time. Beating somebody like Jonathan Martinez and then not getting a big name right after. It's a bit disrespectful for Jose Aldo. And to be honest with you, like, if I was a UFC, I would have made Jose Aldo versus Henry Cejudo. I think that would have been a great fight for both of them. It would have been a legendary fight. You know, it was a fight that was supposed to happen in 2020 before covid And now, you know, you're giving Jose Aldo another up-and-comer contender. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm going to pick Jose Aldo to win this fight. I'm just going to say it straight up. I think Mario Batista, he's a good fighter. But he's not fought anyone to the level of Jose Aldo. I mean, Jose Aldo is a superior striker. He has amazing takedown defense. Mario Batista has very good submission ability. But I don't think he's going to be able to take down Jose Aldo. I don't think he's going to be able to submit Jose Aldo. Like, even someone like Marab, who beat Jose Aldo... You know, two, three years ago, I want to say, like, Marwan wasn't even able to take down Jose Aldo and really control him on the ground. Like, he hold him, he stalled him up, up, up against the fence. And if you think about it, Jose Aldo had more success than the most recent Marwan, like, the most recent opponents of Marwan. Like, he had, he did better than Sean O'Malley. He did better than Peter Yan. And that loss has kind of aged well for Jose Aldo, the fact that he lost to Marab in that way. So I think Jose Aldo, you know, even though he's, you know, older in his career, he's still a superior striker to these guys. He Honestly, he's stronger than ever. And I don't know if that had to do with the fact that, you know, he left the UFC and maybe now he's on the sauce. But I don't really see these up-and-comers really beating him at this point, especially now Mario Batista, who hasn't faced anyone to the caliber of Jose Aldo. I mean, Ricky Simone... That fight doesn't even age well because, I mean, Simone just lost to uh, Vinicius Oliveira. So that doesn't age too well. So nobody on this resume is Jose Aldo level, I'm being honest. And some of these fights were even kind of competitive. So as much as I like Mario Batista, I think he's a pretty decent fighter. I just think Jose Aldo is going to wipe the floor with him and show him levels. I really do believe that. And I don't understand how he's a big underdog. If Mario Batista goes out there and just schools Jose Aldo, I'm going to be very, very impressed. Like, it's honestly going to shock me. So I don't really understand these odds. Maybe, you know, I'm forgetting something about Mario Batista's style that people are not forgetting, but I don't understand these odds. I I really don't understand these odds whatsoever. But I'm going to go with Jose Aldo to win. I could see TKO, but I'm going to go decision. Now, moving on to the cold main event, we've got Raquel Pennington versus Juliana Pena. And I know a lot of people are going to hate on this fight because it's two women fighters. I get it. You know, nobody wants to see that at the top of a pay-per-view. But I kind of like this fight just for the fact that I feel like it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a little bit heated. At least I hope, right? We haven't gotten into the press conference. But Juliana Pena has a big mouth. She's basically the Kobe Covington of the women, you know, the women divisions, basically Raquel Pennington, you know, she likes to talk shit. Both of these girls have a lot of beef. So even though like their fighting style isn't the most exciting, I mean, I think it's going to be an actual good fight. Juliana Pena, you know, she doesn't have great striking. She has terrible boxing, but she has a heart of a line and she's very durable and she loves to be in a scrap. Raquel Pennington has pretty good boxing. You know, she has good grappling, very well-rounded. She isn't elite anywhere, but she's just good enough. She has good cardio, also the heart of a line. And I think that because both of these girls have, like, a big heart and fight with, you know, I don't know, they fight with a lot of grit, I think it's actually going to be a very exciting fight. It's going to be a scrap. Is it going to be technical? No. Is it going to be high level? I don't think so. But I actually think it's going to be a very exciting fight. And I'm actually looking forward to it. And I am rooting for Juliana Pena to win this fight, if I'm being honest. But... I'm going to be real with you guys. I think Raquel Pennington is going to whoop her ass. I think Raquel Pennington is going to whoop her. I, I just rewatched her fight against Myra Bueno Silva. And, man, it was a hard fight to rewatch. But I think Raquel Pennington, you know, she's slick on the feet. You know, has good boxing combinations. Juliana Pena, you know, she gets wild on the feet. And I hate to say it, but her fight against Amanda Nunez, the first fight, was a bit of a fluke. It was a bit of a fluke. And Juliana Pena has also kind of been a very inconsistent fighter. I mean, she lost to Nunez. Two years ago, she hasn't fought in over two years. Before that, she had the submission win over Nunez, which was amazing. You know, McCann lost to uh, Randomy, the Randomy. 
Um, so she's win one, lose one, win one, lose one. So I don't think Juliana Peña is elite. Like I said, I don't think Raquel Pennington is elite either. But I think she's good enough at this point in her career to beat someone like Juliana Peña. So I'm going to go with Raquel Pennington to win. I could see a TKO. But I'm going to go with decision. I think it's going to be a bit of a scrap. But I see Raquel Pennington getting the dub at the end of the day. Now, moving on to the main event. We've got Alex Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree Jr. And, I mean, I'm pretty sure I've already talked about this fight a little bit. Obviously, I hate this fight. I, I do hate this fight. I wish it would have been Magomed and Kaliev. Khalil Roundtree Jr., no disrespect towards him. I don't have anything against him, but he might be the most, the person with the most undeserved title shot that I can remember in recent history. And there's been a lot of fighters that have gotten undeserved title shots. Shido Vera comes to mind, Kobe Covington. There's been a lot of fighters, but man, this one is absolutely horrendous. Khalil Roundtree Jr.'s last win was over Anthony Smith, who stepped in on two weeks' notice on a UFC Apex card last December. That's how long Khalil Roundtree hasn't fought, and that's who he won against. What has Khalil Roundtree done in the division to earn this title shot? Oh, go to his split decision against Dustin Jacoby? Bro, that should have been a decision for Dustin Jacoby. It should not have been a split. It was a fucking robbery. So nothing that Khalil Roundtree has done has, you know, nothing that he has done lately has, you know, made him earn this title shot and the thing that pisses me off is that there was somebody that i believe has done at least enough to get a title shot a fight that fans have been wanting to see that fans have been arguing about alex Pereira versus magomed and Kaliyev was the fight to make and we're getting khalil around to junior which pisses me off now all that to the side throwing that all all what i just said to the side right now i have to judge the fight for what it is i mean alex Pereira has looked amazing in the light heavyweight division getting a lot better getting a lot stronger getting a lot more confident his power clearly translates at 205 clearly he's a lot more durable at 205 i mean we don't really know that because he's knocking everybody out in the first or second round in this division which is absolutely insane and his kickboxing is just levels above these guys i do think that this could be an interesting fight and a part of me as much as i'm a big fan of alex Pereira, i i hope that Khalil Roundtree Jr. does better than we expect. I really do believe that because Khalil Roundtree has incredible Muay Thai, you know, really fast body kicks, really fast on the feet. He does not have the footwork of Alex Pereira. And I feel like for Khalil Roundtree Jr. to win, it's going to have to be early on in the fight because I feel like the more space, the more time you give Alex Pereira in the fight, he's going to read you. He's going to read your movements. He's going to read your game. And if Alex Pereira has you locked down, that's where I feel where Alex Pereira is dangerous. When he's landing the low kick, he's landing the left hook, he's getting your timing. And all it takes is one punch from Alex Pereira to knock you out. And I mean, set, same thing could be really said for Khalil Roundtree. Like, I feel like, you know, he has fast hands. If you land something quick on Alex Pereira, it could be lights out as well. But guys, I'm not going to be ridiculous here. I'm going to go with Alex Pereira to knock him out. Like, I, I think that, you know, part of me hopes that Khalil Roundtree, you know, does a lot better than we expect because I actually want to see a good fight. I don't want to see Alex Pereira just knock this guy out in the first round because if that happens, we're all going to be like, well, this fight shouldn't have happened. This fight shouldn't have happened. It made no fucking sense. So I hope that we're proven wrong and that Khalil Roundtree actually shows a good performance. Like I said, he has really good Muay Thai. He's not a grappler. He's not going to shoot any takedowns. I really don't believe he's going to shoot any takedowns. And maybe he, you know, he makes the fight a little bit interesting. Maybe he checks leg kicks better than we expect. Maybe he's faster than we expect. Maybe he gets the timing of Alex Pereira better than we expect. So at the end of the day, it's still a fight. It's still the light heavyweight division. Anything could really happen. But with all that being said, I just think Alex Pereira is on a different level, man. He's on a fucking different level. And I'm still kind of salty that this fight is even happening, guys. But anyway, I want to know what you guys think. Those are my predictions for UFC 307. I hope you guys have a good one. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.